I'm what? We're recording. All right, guys. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Just Throwing It Out There, the podcast uh, where we are joined weekly by my lovely, lovely co host. We got Melissa. Hey. Hey, hey, Danny. <laughs> hey. Talia. Hey, y'all. My name is Sharice, and joining us this week is lifestyle blogger and social media influencer, Ms. Jamie Wong. Yes. How are you? Good. It's so nice to join you guys, finally. Welcome to the show. We're going to have so much fun. I'm happy to have you. (laughs) I'm looking forward to all the questions and everything you guys have come up with. Yes. And I love, I love your lights in the background. I love your, your little candle you got going back yeah, there. Little area. I thought I was like, I need to have a nice background while I'm on the Zoom. Absolutely. You're already <laughs> doing it. You're already showing us why you're the lifestyle blogger. <laughs> and you're so you're like on brand. <laughs> it's a vibe. It's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe. We talked about vibe. this before the show. Okay. It's a vibe. <laughs> You're dating yourself. It on brand. Th- okay. Jamie says they use on brand. They say on brand. Not say that. Can, we'll use it interchangeably during the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there so, you go. On, in today's episode, we're going to talk to Jamie about her journey as a writer and a documenter of her life's narratives, and we're going to be asking her some questions that might be on your minds. Uh, and we definitely have questions because we're super interested, which is why we're having her here um, in trying to demystify the whole um, world of blogging and sharing your life on social media. Um, so, uh, Jamie, as we said, she grew up in Jersey native. Oh, Jersey in the house. Um, so, you know, All from Jersey. Jersey native to, you know, middle and high school teacher to blogger to writer to, you know, Wattpad woman, right? She's got stuff yeah. she's trying to Story get out on there. Yeah. Um, so we just want to have her here. Maybe you'll be inspired by her journey. Maybe uh, you'll feel that you want to start something similar or do something similar. So if everyone is ready and if Jamie is ready, we're going to get right into some questions. We ready, y'all? Ready. Ready. So, Jamie, my first question is, what made you start blogging? Like, why did you decide that was the path you wanted to take at this time? Yeah. Um, so... I always thought it was interesting to kind of document like what I'm doing when I was like going somewhere, going on vacation. Um, I was thinking about this. And when I was in high school, I used to have a Zanga. You guys remember that? Zanga on live journal and all those things. So, not, uh, that's not our age group, but yes. <laughs> I remember, I remember Please, Zanga. Your age group? And live group. Like, I live journal. I may have done something like that. I don't no, know. but yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. So it was like, <laughs> So when I was in high school, Zanga and Live Journal were really popular. The kids now, they do all like the Tumblr stuff, which I don't really know how that works. But um, I used to do that. And what two of my best friends in high school used to do it too. And it would just be like, we would write daily, like today after school, we went to the mall and like, you know, just like talking like an di- online diary for everybody. And we just comment on each other's things. And I stopped that, you know, at the end of high school. Um, And then I saw the rise of blogs and I thought they were so fun to read and see what people are doing and what they're wearing and all these different things. Um, And I thought about it and I never actually like went through with making one and like figuring out what website am I going to use? How am I going to do this? Um, And then I was, it was probably the year, a year or two before I actually started my blog. I went on vacation during spring break. I was working at the school that I work at now. And I went with one of my coworkers, went to Vegas. And (laughs) the two of us went for like four days. We went and um, I remember thinking that I need to have some kind of platform where I can talk about like what I'm doing, what I'm seeing, like what I decided to wear when we went out and everything, because um, just for like other people with like like like-minded things that wanted to see that. I remember my friend, we were sitting in one of those lounges, like, you know, in the middle of the casino where they have the little lounges where people can just like sit down and drink something or eat something. And I was sitting there and my friend went to the bar to go get something. And I was sitting there and I was seeing the lights and I was like, oh, my, my shoes look so cool with these lights on them. I was like, I want to take a picture of this. And I have like my digital camera. And my friend came over. She's like, 
are you taking a picture of your shoes? I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I'm not doing that. Why did I do that? No. No. <laughs> like, I was not doing that. <laughs> so, like, I was like, no. <laughs> like, by the way. So, I was like, I need something like a platform where it's like other people that are like, you're not crazy for taking a picture of your shoes, <laughs> of your shoes in this life. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, um, so I started officially in 2014. I had to write it down because I couldn't remember <laughs> what year. So wow. I started in 2014. Yeah. yeah. That's what seven so, years. Am I doing the math correctly? Seven years? Yeah. Um, <gasps> probably maybe around this time in 2014, because I remember yeah. having it up. Um, it was like really new when it was like prom time at school. I remember that. Wow. Yeah. So a question you were talking about your shoes. Mm -hmm. What do you decide? How do you decide what content to put on your, your, your social media or your blogs? Are there some things you share? Are there things that you don't? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, the tagline, I think on my blog or on my Instagram is like, um, sharing anything, anything and everything that interests me. I think that's one of my taglines. Um, so I keep it to, you know, books that I like, um, clothes, food, um, anything that interests me. And I don't go too personal in it, especially like I don't have pictures usually of my friends on there just because unless they ask to be on it, because I don't know if they're comfortable with me putting them on there or anything. Um, if I was on a trip with them and they don't mind, like, oh yeah, you can put this up of me or in my Instagram stories, that's fine. Like I'll ask them like, oh, do you mind if I post this? Because some people just don't want to be on there. Um, in terms, and, and then I just don't get too personal. Like I might mention something going on, like if I'm going to a wedding with for my friends, but I usually don't say them by name. It's just kind of like, right. you know, in the background, like I'm going to California for a wedding this weekend with friends that I went to high school with. Um, so I don't get too detailed with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. speaking of your, your social media and the blog, I was, the pictures are beautiful. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, and I also was looking at the, the, I saw the PJs. I was reading the one for the comfy PJs. Uh -huh. My question is the, the pictures, the pictures that you choose, are you using your regular camera? Are you using a special camera? Like, cause they look very like crisp. So like, a lot of the pictures. That was my are technology from... question. Cause I suck at technology. <laughs> like I'm like, hmm, how are pictures so crisp? Cause yeah. you know, putting our stuff up. I'm like, I, that's the kind of quality that you know, people look for. And I think that mm -hmm. the quality of pictures is what draw people's in when you're scrolling, right? When you're looking, yeah. that's what makes people click. That's what makes pe people go see the blog. So how do you like, what do you use for that? Yeah. A lot of bloggers use professional cameras um, and they take the time to teach themselves how to use all those things. And I have not because it's very confusing to me. It sounds very confusing. Like I'll talk, uh, I'll look at their blogs or their captions, and they talk about like what settings they put it on and like apertures and things, and that just sounds very confusing to me. Um, mm -hmm. I do have like digital cameras where if I'm going um, or nicer digital cameras if I'm going on a trip, I'll bring it with me for like really nice photos. But most of my photos, unless it's like my friend is a professional photographer, unless it's taken by her, most of my phones are from my iPhone. And I know a lot of phone, people, iPhone what? <laughs> I have the 11. The 11. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people say that the iPhone cameras now are like just as good as yes. a lot People of are the, shooting whole videos, out there. videos with their iPhones. I know that much. That's why I'm like, which number? Because I, I think it was the, when the 11 first came out. Um, What's the little girl or the boy? I don't know if it was either Selena Gomez, and I hate to put their two names together. I think it was Selena Gomez. I think she shot her video with an iPhone. Hmm. Yeah, so did Lady Gaga, did a hmm. whole video uh -huh. yeah. with the iPhone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just use my phone, okay. and then I'll put it um, on my computer. There's like different apps where I don't do, I won't put like a filter on it or anything, but I'll brighten it or like do the contrast for colors to make it pop a little bit more, but I don't like, do Super like some, I know some people do like face tuning and stuff like that. I don't do that, but I'll like brighten the colors and, and things like that. 
face splitting. That's so and so Jamie, where do you find time for all of this? Because um, we shared earlier, you know, you have a, a whole ass career outside of doing all of this. <laughs> so, you know, and, and a lot of people are like, I would love to do something like that, but I just don't have the time to put mm -hmm. into it. So talk to us a little bit about that. So it's funny because one of um, our coworkers, because I work with you, Talia, um, one of our coworkers had asked me a while ago, um, how do you find time to like, you know, you're here working all day and then you have your blog and um, you want to write and all of these things. Um, and I looked at her seriously and I said, I don't sleep. <laughs> I was like, joking. I was like, no, I just, I don't sleep. Um, but I know that you had even said to me once, like that you feel that, um, if it's something you really want to do, you find the time to do it. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's one of those things like you carve time out, like, okay, I'm not going to, you know, I need 30 minutes to just get this done today or like just making a schedule for yourself. Um, I know ahead of time what I'm planning to, you know, blog about, I'll make like a calendar. So I'll know like, okay, I've already done this. Like this is, this is something, if I'm sharing, let's say a recipe, I made this like three weeks ago, I already have the pictures and I know I'm going to post about it on Wednesday. So like Sunday, I have 30 minutes. I'm going to just like upload my pictures now, edit if I need to with like, you know, shadows and like, if it's too dark mm -hmm. and then, um, usually I'll write it up the night before I schedule the post to go up at like 8am. So it's like on a schedule. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to press publish. So it's scheduled the night before I'll just be watching t I'll be on the couch watching TV and I can just like write it up and all the pictures are already done and just like schedule it to go. So I think there's ways to find time to do anything that you want to do if you can, you know, just make a schedule for yourself, you know, you can make it so it's not so overwhelming mm -hmm. and figure it out what, what works for you. I know some people schedule things way in advance, like though I write usually the day before, but I know people who have things scheduled like one week, two weeks out, like they've already written it and it's just going to go live on a certain day. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So I think do you find it easier to like carve out like tiny moments across a long period of time? Or are you a, a person who's like, you know, I'm just going to take like four hours and like bang out the next like couple, like week or a couple days mm -hmm. and get all that planned out? I'm the kind of person that does a little bit each day because I don't think I have any days where I have, I can dedicate four hours to do mm -hmm. like a whole week's worth of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it also kind of burns you out. Well, for me personally, like that's for me, if it, I had to sit there for four hours doing it, it would just get tiring. I think I need to like always be doing multiple things. And that's the same for when I'm actually actually working like a little bit each day, I find myself multitasking at the same time. So I'm like, I've got like a window open where I'm like uploading pictures so I can edit them. And at the same time, I'm um, finding, I don't know, like products to link for like tomorrow's blog post for things that are similar to what I have in the post. And then I'm also, you know, at the same time, I'll think, oh, I need to write that, e like reply <laughs> to that email. So I've got like four windows open at the same time. And I feel like for me, um, that just works for me to have doing multiple things at once. So Leah loves that with her multiple gazillion windows open on her computer. Right. Windows tabs, yeah. ladies. Windows I'm not tabs. Tabs. I'm Although at the advice of my open. therapist, I had to close them because they were causing me anxiety. So I went from one hundred. <laughs> Danny likes to have the I have multiple. lots of tabs. I'm not gonna we're not gonna discuss how many tabs I have open. I'm just gonna ask a question. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> nope, I'll leave that alone. In, in your opinion, though, what are some of the perks of lifestyle blogging and being a social media influencer? Uh, I just like, for me, it started because I wanted to be creative and it was like an outlet for me to share the things that I like. So one of the nice things, is, nice things has been finding people who also like doing that and being creative and doing similar things because um, I don't think any of my friends, like my non you know online friends have the same kind of um interests as me and like and all these different things so it's nice to like connect with other people um and just kind of be creative because it's not something I get to do on if I if I wasn't blogging it wouldn't be something I get to do every day 
with being creative and trying to think of things. And it helps me actually be more creative because I'll see ideas that people have like, oh, I like that looks really cool. I want to try doing that. Mm -hmm. like try to make it my own so it kind of it helps me think of like new things to do Jamie um how important are followers to you you mentioned that you know you you can interact with your audience and mm -hmm. you guys share the same interests is it a numbers thing or is it a quality of people that yeah. you're looking for um you so tell me this is a very um I don't know what the word is a very complex <laughs> like thing in the whole like blogging and online thing because everyone's all about numbers all right. the time how many followers do you have how many likes do you get how many people and now the big thing is how many people are saving your photo because apparently that is really big in analytics when you can save the photo on instagram um and that's one of the big things if you are getting paid by companies um to you know to advertise for them they'll ask you for your analytics. They'll ask you like, okay, who's your audience? How many, like, what's your average, you know, likes and saves and, and things like that. Shares also is another thing. Like if people are sharing your content, they keep track of that also. Um, so that's really important for a lot of people. And it gets very hard because you start to get into that pitfall of like, that's all you care about. And you start to get really, it starts like really mess with you. I actually had to stop. I turned off the notifications on my phone last year of Instagram because it would, it would start to get to be, that's all I would think about. Like I posted something. Is it like no one is seeing it? Because also Instagram always changes how they're promoting things. And I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like a few years ago, people were all complaining that they weren't doing things chronologically anymore. On yes, the they, they changed the, they changed the time. So you were seeing stuff from five minutes ago, but you were also seeing things from like two days ago. So yeah, it was throwing it all off. Yeah. So things aren't chronological anymore. And people were getting really upset about it. And it ended up, it ends up helping mostly people who already have very big followings and fans. So mostly celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. That have like all these things because the more people who like your stuff, it'll show up on your feed more. So the people who aren't getting any, like not getting a lot of likes, they're never going to show up on your feed because you're not getting that initial like right. the amount of likes on there for it to show up on people's so Instagram. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So the people you're going to see are the people who already have like a hundred thousand likes in the first, you know, 10 minutes. Right. So, um, that was really, um, that was starting to really get to me. And I would see that that's was taking over, like, I guess like, um, like my purpose for blogging because my purpose for blogging was just to be creative. And I started the Instagram a year or two after I started my blog as a supplement to my blog. So I had to keep reminding myself that like, this is just to advertise what I'm, what my blog post is about. Mm -hmm. And I'm just putting like one or two pictures up. It wasn't meant to be like, Instagram wasn't meant to be my main, mm -hmm. my main thing. Right. That's so that's why I had to like remind myself, like, this is just the extra to what my original thing was with my blog. And I had to remind myself that like a lot because that's what anyone, most people care about is how many likes you get on Instagram. So I had to start turning off my notifications because if I posted something and I wasn't getting the notifications, it would like start to like eat away at me. Like, should I yeah. take it down and like put it back up at a different time? Is anyone <laughs> interested? Is yeah. anyone watching? Maybe like <laughs> Crazy a bad time. Maybe I need to put it up at a different time because Instagram will also tell you like when the most popular times are for you and you know, things like that. Um, and then I had to remind myself that that Instagram wasn't my, my main thing. My blog is. So even if my Instagram wasn't getting a lot of likes, I was still getting people who were still you know, visiting my blog and reading it, I was still getting new subscribers. And this is actually really important if you're thinking of, of blogging. If you have your own blog, like that's yours, you own it, that's, you have control over the whole thing. When it's social media, you don't have control over what happens with it, right? I can post my stuff there, but you know how many times Instagram is down and everyone freaks out because it's not working and everyone like runs to Twitter, like is Instagram down and everyone comes to Twitter. It's always like hashtag Instagram down and you can see like all the things about people going to Twitter to find out if it's working. And that's like, and then people always get reminded, okay, but my blog is still there. Right. 
And I don't need to depend on Instagram if it's like not working or if it goes away one day, like no one uses it anymore. I still have my, my blog. Your space. My, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like my own space. So that's been really interesting. Have you ever met any of your, um, followers on, on your blog? Have you interacted? Have y'all done meetups or anything? I haven't done meetups. I had one time I went to, there was like a store opening somewhere up. I'm trying to remember like in Clifton or something. It was a store that is, um, I don't think it's Michael's. It was like some kind of craft store, like mm -hmm. almost like, um, I think it's called and that like a home I know, and that's and absolutely that. And that. It's, yeah it's, yep it's associated with christmas tree shops that's yes right. with christmas shop. <laughs> there was like a new one open little here. one but no <laughs> so there was one that opened um near clifton a few years ago and they invited me to like this grand opening thing where you can get like you know um there was like a raffle and all these things so i went and I didn't see anybody I knew, but I got a message the next day from a woman who was there who was like, oh, I thought I recognized you. So that was one of the things. <laughs> <laughs> she would follow you on here. And she was also at this thing. Um, so I haven't met anybody through blogging um, okay. in person. There's been people who I've become good friends with that were like, oh, one day we're going to have to meet up. But a lot of times with the online thing, like one of... Um, one good friend that I made, she's in California. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, one day we're gonna have to meet up or like go away together somewhere. Nice. It's been nice yeah, to like, a, a lot of people. A lot of bloggers I know urge that audience into, you know, something bigger and, you know, where they meet up and things like mm -hmm. that. But yeah. yeah. I would yeah. think also with the like with the pandemic um last year with all the lockdowns and stuff, do you feel like that made you be more creative or did you have a hard time? finding content during that time because we everyone was just like in the house board mm -hmm. in the house and I'm in the house board like it was just, it was just <laughs> home right like how did you deal with that last year last year so it was just a lot of pictures at home <laughs> or like just like in front of the house like on my or like my parents porch or something um so it was I did I couldn't do content with like traveling because I couldn't go anywhere um it was a lot more things like I think I did four or five posts where like the cooking. new things I'm binging on Netflix. <laughs> so, like, so, like, here's 10 things I watched in the past, in the past month. So like, I try to like always think of ideas. I'll write them down. Like, oh, that's a really good idea. I'll have to do that. So it's constantly like writing down things that like will randomly come to you at times. Or like, um, I did this last year and it'd be really cool if I can like repurpose it, like show how you can do something different with this thing this year. So um, I try to think of things like that. And like I said, during the pandemic, it was like four or five posts that was like, here's the new tip, 10 things I've been binging. <laughs> right. Right. Um, this is what I bought off of Amazon this week. This yeah. week. <laughs> today. How about today? Is right. <laughs> so Jamie, what I've been noticing, I, I was checking out your Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, you're embarking on a roller skating <laughs> journey. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Because like it seemed roller skating, you know what, in the pandemic, I feel like has gotten a lot of shine. People yep. are roller skating it's again. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Like it's really becoming a thing. Um, tell us about what you're doing and uh, <laughs> what you're sharing with your fans. So I during the pandemic, I would see so many videos of people roller skating. <laughs> and they were all doing these things and it looked so cool because they were really good at it <laughs> like, yeah like, the music and they call it like jam skating and like all these things like this is so cool I want to do this and so I would see these videos for months I saw them since probably last spring I was seeing these videos online and then um back in the winter I just saw more and more and I was like you know I think I, I want to give it a try but a lot of the people that skate live in warm weather states <laughs> so they're skating all year long like I saw people in Texas California they're skating all year yeah and I'm like looking out the window and it was like two feet of snow outside I was like I guess I can't <laughs> I guess I can't start now <laughs> so I started messaging people who were also like skating newbies like people who had just started to learn last year and they were like chronicling their journey of skating and I messaged a few of them and I said like I thought that what they were doing I was, was so cool and I was like I want to get started on it do you have any recommendations for me what kind of skates should I get like what do you like 
how do I get started? And they were very nice and like would message me back and tell me like, you know, here's some websites of like different places to buy skates. And um, I buy my, and they would tell me like, these are the pads that I like from Amazon. And if you have those things, like those are the basic things you need to get started. Like that's all you need. Um, And I said, okay, like when there's no snow on the ground, (laughs) I'm going to start here. (laughs) Um, So back in March, I finally, I bought skates and the skate prices are, there's a huge range mm-hmm. of skate prices. <laughs> right. So some skates cost like $300. It's like, okay, well, I'm not going to buy the most expensive skates because <laughs> you know if this is going to work. <laughs> this might be a total fail. Right. Um, <laughs> so I got a pair that were like, you know, like a decent price. They weren't like the cheapest ones because I also didn't know if the cheapest ones were like how good they were. Break your ankles, right. right? <laughs> <laughs> I oh, got like a there's- <laughs> I got like right. a middle of the road pair. I got my helmet, elbow, knee pads, and I haven't skated since I was in like fourth or fifth grade. Right. <laughs> because back when I was in elementary school, everyone used to have skating birthday parties. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I did. Remember. I had one. Yeah, you did. So, I sure did. Wait, Wait. Like skate twenty two? No, <laughs> no. Uh, I've had one at Skate twenty two, and there was a a place in Wayne called USA Skate. I remember yes, USA I Skate. I got <laughs> pictures. Uh, wow. <laughs> See, you can start skating too. Yeah, <laughs> your your childhood. Uh, yeah, there was a skating rink near me when I was in fourth and fifth grade. Everyone had their birthday parties there. It was called um, United Skates. And it was like Edison or Woodbridge or one of those places. I feel like I went there. I feel like I that probably. was her child's birthday party. I feel like I went <laughs> yeah. there. It's and so- it was, I remember everyone think it was like so cool. I didn't have the quads. I didn't have skates. I had the roller blades is what everyone had back then when I was it's in like elementary nervous. school. So we had rollerblades, and if it was your birthday, you could go up to the DJ booth, and you got to pick out the next song. The song, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was really cool. And I remember, like, I wasn't great at it, but I don't remember being scared because I was only like nine. <laughs> so like, you you know, you go around in circles, you're like going really fast and all these things. <laughs> and, um, and you were happy. Like, it felt yeah, like it's so very, fun. like a fun thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I put on the skates when I got, when I got them in the mail. Now I was like, I was like, this is this is terrifying. <laughs> I was like, put them on. I'm like standing up from like the kitchen in the kitchen, like um, standing up from the chair. And I was like, I can't move. Like I'm like I'm frozen here. I'm not moving. And it was so scary. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to like get over this if I want to like I want to be like these girls that I see <laughs> that I see online, yeah, cool. getting it in yeah, on like, the skates. Yeah. So. Um, so I've been doing it for a few weeks now and I only have time to do it maybe like two times a week for like 20, 30 minutes. So I haven't progressed too much, <laughs> but I'm getting more comfortable where I'm not like getting really up. scared and terrified as soon as I stand up. Yeah. Um, but I've fallen twice and both times I had mentioned to you guys, I both times I fell have been on places where I don't have padding. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should try to like, fall on the places oh, where you God. have padding like like I, go to your knees go I know. To your so elbow. I there's a right way to fall there's, there's a right, right way to fall uh, there's videos and i asked um i messaged one girl about like you wow. know do you have any tips so apparently which i don't know if this really i haven't tried this because i haven't fallen again so far since this has happened but they always say like try to fall like to your side instead of forwards or backwards hmm. right and um, I guess, and also if you feel like you're about to fall, like try to get as low as you can, like bend your knee so it's not a terrible fall. Uh-huh. But when it's happening, you're freaking out so much that I was gonna say, you're not like, even thinking, thinking about, you're not thinking about, about it. it. Yeah, because I know the two times I fell, like it's just maybe <laughs> that makes sense. But when it's actually happening, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in theory, but like, when it's happening, you're just panicking. You're like, oh my god, and you're like, you know, yeah. flailing around <laughs> trying to like, <laughs> try not fall falling when you're not falling right yeah because babies do that in the womb, practicing actually. to fall babies practice crying in the womb and that way when they get out they know how they to know cry. how to cry really? yes, I they know that. yes is that a real thing 
think so. She can't, no. I she think said, so. I think so. <laughs> she said she Melissa so. has nope. trust nope. issues. Nope. We're going to have to fact check that. I will get back to you guys. When Talia says things as fact, I, I will do the research that on that. that times because you can add like the text to the uh, to the podcast of like asterisk. Yeah. This is we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna look to, we're gonna look that under up. it's under review. It's <laughs> issues. We're not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not. We're gonna we're gonna look into that. Don't I'm not taking that as a fact. Uh, let me just say my first glance at the first set of uh, looking that up. Mm, it's looking suspect. Yeah. It's looking crazy. Look right now, I look because I have to, have to fact now. check that her is, things she's right fact checker. Stay focused, y'all. Jamie's here. <laughs> we, have to be funny. <laughs> we do this. At least we warned her that this might happen and that we would go off into a tangent. But we're gonna bring, okay. it we're gonna bring it back. Bring it back. We're gonna bring it back. We're gonna bring, oh, it. We're gonna bring it back. So, Jamie, do you have any? Do you collaborate with any brands or any products or anything like that? Is that something you do? I don't have any ongoing because um, I know there's some bloggers who have like ongoing contracts with different brands and everything usually the things if um, someone reaches out to me are kind of um, one-offs like um, and a lot of times it's just an exchange for free product or something um, which so this is this is another thing um, that I wrote down to talk about <laughs> when mm-hmm. you guys yeah. like some of your questions you were going to have um, there are a lot of bloggers who can do this who do this full-time they make enough money that they make enough that they were able to replace their full-time job wow um, I and I feel like there's a lot of different factors that go into that of people who are able to make that happen. Um, I don't make a lot of money. And I know that one of the questions that you guys had said you might ask was about like um, about like taxes and things like that for people that blog. I think, I don't remember what the number is, but there's a certain amount you have to make every year before you do have to pay taxes o- over that, which I don't, I don't usually make that much money with blogging. A lot of it is just in exchange for free product um, that I get. But there are a lot of influencers and bloggers who will say like one of the first rules you should you should do you should have for yourself is never do something in exchange for product only do it for money instead Mm. and i think that works that does work for people especially if you are if this is your full-time thing so i think you just need to go into it knowing like okay is this my job we're like okay i'm not going to do this i'm not going to advertise this for you just for you to send me you know this clothing item or this perfume or something or is it something that's on the side which is more like what I have where it's just a creative thing on the side we're like oh we'd like to send you this product um for you to test out and usually when it's something like that they might say like there might not be any obligation where I don't have to post about it but usually I will because it's just content from like an idea for me to write Mm -hmm. about I don't need to think of something for that Mm -hmm. um but some companies will say like, okay, in exchange for this, you need to post three times and have the link in your bio and a whole list of things, which when it's something that elaborate, I usually don't say yes to because it just seems like a lot for not a lot in exchange for that. And there's so many scams too. Like so many people will reach out to you saying like, oh, can DM us first? Yes, we've seen that. I know what you're thinking, Talia. Wait. No, have you guys done a lot of like, the comments on your on your yes and like, i'm like yeah. underscore i'm like uh, this has all these underscores in it to lay this ain't real wait wait wait, wait, no, wait i would think good. that i would think that jamie that it will want to be a product that you <laughs> like like <laughs> use yeah, and that that your and target that audience exactly. can appreciate yeah That's what i would think you would go for <laughs> And it's a lot like you have to be, I guess, over the years, I've gotten better at like spotting different things. Cause some of them, obviously, like what you guys are talking about, you know, that's like, this is totally like ridiculous. But there's some, that, like, there's it's some not. that seem legitimate, like they've got websites and everything. But, um, but if I reach out to them, like if I reply, I'm like, oh, like, thanks for reaching out to me. What did you have in mind? And like, you don't like, you know, there's those companies that you just never hear back from. So you know that they're like fake or sometimes you get companies, I'll get some companies, like especially clothing or jewelry brands that'll say, you know, when you work together, um, you can pick out any three pieces and you just have to pay for shipping or whatever. Right. But here, but the thing is a lot of the ones that are like pay for shipping, they want you to just pay for the shipping and they're not going to actually send you you the the items that you got. So it's just, 
I guess with experience and being careful, you know, like what to look for, what not to look for, what's legitimate. Gotcha. So basically, we should yeah. research with more research. <laughs> Before you guys say yes to these sponsorships. <laughs> Jamie, who, who do you think is your target audience? Um, so a lot of, I guess with a lot of things that I write about, and then if I look at some of like on Instagram, the analytics of people who are looking at my things, it's a lot of um, 20, 20s, 30s, I think it goes into like 40s. So that's like in women, there's like, maybe it's like 90% women, 10% men that, that look at my things. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of my range. And I'm in my 30s. So I guess like that's my target audience. Your so target audience. That, yeah, that would be interested in similar things to me. Cool. So do you write with this, like, do you create with this audience in mind? Uh, do you feel like you're more like at this point of your, you know, blogging career that you're sort of trying to curate things that might appeal to that audience? Or is it still like, I'm just doing what I want to do? Yeah, it's mostly just what I, what I want to write about. Because if you write about only for, there's a lot of people who just write for their target audience, which works for them. But then I feel like my target audience, people are so different, right? Because even my own friends, right? All my friends I went to high school with are married and have kids because a lot mm -hmm. of them married, like their high school sweethearts or, you know, things like that. They've been together for 15 years, 16 years. Wow. Um, and so what they're, what they might be interested in a lot of things that I have were like books or like food and even some clothes and everything. But if they were writing, they might be more in like the, you know, baby items type, like if they would write sure. they would more family, type right. Blog, right? right? Um, and then I have like the younger, maybe people in their twenties that are more about, you know, cooking and traveling. And so I just do kind of what appeals to me and then like, it'll stick with somebody right. <laughs> in that right. range, right. Um, just because it's so different. And it's nice. Like when I do find bloggers who are around the same age as me, who also, um, there's one girl, I wrote down her name that I follow. Um, her name's Lauren. Her blog and her Instagram is Lakeshore Lady. She lives in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I had reached out to her because I was like, it's so refreshing to see someone who's also, you know, in their early 30s, um, who isn't, she doesn't have kids yet. She's not married. She is engaged. Because so many people that I find that are big bloggers and big on Instagram all you know, live families. in married having babies now and they're like 25 years old. I'm like, I cannot relate. <laughs> I cannot relate. <laughs> like, I like, I like the content and I like following them, but like, this isn't my life. Cause mm -hmm. you know, I didn't get married at 22, like a lot of these people and like, you know, start having kids and all that things, all those things. So um, it's nice when you find other bloggers who are like in similar life situation and also yeah. you're, just you're sticking true uh you're sticking true to what to yourself and to what yeah. you like um your authentic self right like you're not trying to mold yourself to fit into what everyone else is doing and i think in doing that you're gonna find joy in doing it right because you're not changing anything about yourself in order to to have the content yeah. So I and I think that. that's the thing that people, people know when you're being genuine or not, if you're doing something that's like, you know, mm -hmm. fake, you yep. know, like, oh, this is something she actually likes instead of something, or this is what she like thinks that we would like mm -hmm. her to write about. Mm -hmm. um, and because like, I found it not that easy to find people who are in the same age range as me and same life situation that if I'm doing that, then hopefully there's other people who are like, oh, there's someone who is also like me, mm -hmm. you know, right. online. They say, so. Yeah. They say there's a universality in being subjective. Hmm. That was uh, some great writer said yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that you'll be able to relate to people because you're telling your story. Mm -hmm. um, so that's awesome. And then I told you before, there was this movie where she wasn't being uh, universal. It's, it's a movie called Ingrid Goes West. If y'all are into weird movies and crazy people, there's this girl who like emulates a um, lifestyle blogger. She becomes her, Aubrey Plaza. Uh, if you're familiar, she's hilarious. Uh, but 
Jamie said she had no fear of anybody emulating her lifestyle or trying to duplicate her. <laughs> just want to put that out there. <laughs> that she said that will never happen to her. But it was a concern of mine. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think somebody I'm famous might enough try to take to your, to your identity. Oh, God. I don't think I'm famous <laughs> enough for anyone to want to imitate me. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, you that's what know. happened in that movie. You never know. <laughs> well, but then, know. It, it sounds like this, um, you're, you're creating almost a, a, a sub community or maybe, you know, a, in a, a, a primary community for yourself because you mentioned that a lot of the friends that you have that are local, although you're friends, right, you all have various interests. It seems like this, this blogging lifestyle for you has helped you to, you know, you're putting your stuff out there, but it's also helping you to connect with other people, which I think is amazing, um, especially as COVID and all these changes with the world is asking us to like, okay, reimagine how do we foster and maintain friendships and connections uh, with people. So I feel like for you, and you can correct me, but that it opened up like a whole other world of like-minded individuals for you. Yeah, definitely. I think um, blogging has definitely helped me make more connections, make friends where like, if I wasn't blogging, if I wasn't on Instagram, I would have never met these people. Um, and then that helped me, I think, cope a lot with COVID because I was already doing that before, like talking to people online and, you know, making these friendships and relationships. So that kind of helped me. I wasn't, um, it wasn't something that I got thrown into where like, okay, now I'm only at home and I can only talk to people online. So that really helped. It wasn't a huge adjustment for me, but it also helped me like, okay, reach out to more people mm -hmm. um, and make more friends. But um, right before, you know, quarantine lockdown and all that happened last March is when I started writing on Wattpad. And I actually made a lot of friends through that. So that kind of just coincided happily with that because I started writing maybe a month before mm -hmm. um, the whole COVID thing happened. It was like last February where I started posting mm -hmm. on there and I made, you know, friends through that. So there was just a happy coincidence that everything happened at the same time and let me tell y'all jamie had people chomping at the bits waiting for the next chapter on wattpad people was like come on give us some more and she's like i'm yeah, y'all wait okay you gotta wait a couple of days i'm gonna hit you with some more fire but just sit with that for a minute so she gives you like little bits at a time like one chapter at a time just a little bit just a little taste she knows how to do it she knows how to work it y'all did, did you learn anything from the um you know that that Twitter story that now they're making a movie out of it about the. Have you heard of that oh, about yes. the, um, the yes. two strippers? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and that the, girl Taylor that's dating the cop from Grey's Anatomy. I'm not the cop, the doctor from Grey's Anatomy. What's the? Oh, girl? but now she, but Melissa, now she's, she's so allegedly supposed to be with um, what's Lisa Bonet's daughter? She broke up. Yeah, she's supposed to be with Zoe um, Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz. They what That's now? a new thing. That's oh, new. But we'll talk about that. Go Google that after I'm Yes. Looking. So anyway, <laughs> if y'all don't know the story that I'm talking about, it was a You're Twitter, cool. it was a Twitter feed or thread. Uh -huh. And now there's a movie, and the movie looks off the hook. It and looks the, cuckoo crazy. It looks cuckoo crazy. But the tagline was, um, y'all wanted the way it started and they said it's one of the greatest intros of all of uh english literature y'all huh? want to know how me and this bitch had a falling out yes that's that was how the, the that's starts. the line that's how it <laughs> starts that's how it starts it looks crazy that's how it starts and y'all have to read the story on on twitter it's amazing it? we, we, we gonna, just we, look we up. gonna get into it we're we'll, gonna talk we'll, about we'll, it we'll, like we're gonna put it in the chat but Y'all want to know how me and this bitch fell out? <laughs> and this bitch too? <laughs> that's that's like one way to keep people interested. That <laughs> that well, like, and and that's how I saw it. I'm like, ooh, what's this? Ever told on Twitter. They knew yes. what they were doing. And they made it, a, and she made it a movie. Her name is Zola, Zola Moon. Zola, yes. Something like wow. that. Genius. It was, that is, it was, I want to know right now. That's just, yes. see, Jamie's doing the same thing. One and chapter she, at a time. And yeah. it's, it's a novel on twitter mm -hmm. i haven't seen the like i don't know i don't know the original thread i saw people posting that like a week or two ago but like just copying it and they would take like reality start like you know screenshots of reality yes. stars and stuff. yes you want to know, know where me and this girl fell out yes. it was, it was yeah. really crazy. 
Amazing. It it's out. amazing what you could do with social media, some creativity, mm -hmm. blogging, influencing. Jamie, thank you for uh, sharing that with us today. I really no, no, appreciate no. it. It was fun to talk to you guys and all of it. Can we yeah. just like really quick before we wrap up this segment, Jamie, can you yeah, just sure. walk us through like really quick, like bullet points, like your process for like what someone to, is listening to us today and they want to be Jamie, but not right. I want to be someone <laughs> like myself. Right? Yeah. Not, not I want to blog someone, right now. Right? Where, where do I start and what steps do I take to okay. uh, make it happen? Question. That's a great question. So when I first started, I went to WordPress, which I install on WordPress and you can do, a, you can get a free website with WordPress. It'll just be the basic version, which you get like, you know, a certain amount of storage and all of these things for your images. Um, but the basic WordPress is great. I used it for a long time um, until I upgraded to the premium where I have, you know, more capabilities with it. Um, and you get your own domain name once you go premium. But um, you can start with the basic WordPress. I know some people use like Blogspot and like mm -hmm. a couple other websites. I remember um, Blogspot. Yeah. So people have some people have Wix, different things. Yeah. I just use WordPress. Um, so I would say to get started, like just think about what you want to write about. Like for me, I a lot of bloggers feel like um, they need to pick um, a, a niche for themselves. Like it's only beauty or it's only food. And that's why I did lifestyle actually, because I couldn't decide, like, I didn't want to be only one thing. So I was like, oh, I'll just be lifestyle. I'll just be like anything <laughs> in life that I like to do or that I enjoy. Um, and I didn't want to focus only on one. So I would say just decide like what kind of blog you want to do. If it's just like a daily diary for yourself or if it's movies, mm. um, bargain, Ooh. you know, like um, fashion deals, bargains whatever you want to do. Um, and then you can just get started. You can um, link it with your social media. So what I do is like, I'll, you know, plan out content that I want to do. I'll take photos for it, write the post. Um, and then I will pick out some of those photos once my post goes live to put onto Instagram. And then that's kind of like an ad, like, okay, this is what I'm talking about in today's blog post. Like I'll put a picture up of um, like a salad that I made and said the recipe is on in today's blog and so that's kind of mm. how, how you get the blog mm -hmm. yeah so they have the link so you in the use bio. Instagram to like drive the traffic to the blog you kind of like tease people and say okay if you want the rest of this y'all got to go on over to life according yeah. to Jamie thanks bye yeah like <laughs> I'll always have that a caption I'll say like oh details or more information is in today's blog post mm -hmm. and then they can go nice. and do that's that good. yeah yeah mm -hmm. all right so I would say just, you know, you just get started. The it, That's one of the things like even with like skating, I was like, it's terrifying, but like, I'll just start because you have to just do it yeah. somewhere. That's so, it. Ain't nothing to it, but to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is the, the, the part where people lose their minds. <laughs> they can't choose. The they can't commit. You gotta commit. I'm ready. Versus, 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 versus. Can we get a graphic? Can we get? Can we get a graphic? Versus. So this week, with Jamie here, uh -huh. our versus is Jamie gave us. What is uh, versus? Oh, versus. Versus is when we took. Okay, so we borrowed on the idea from the versus. We stole it. When, this so, so it's not it's the right like word. Use the right verbs with the not <laughs> We borrowed the idea from the verses that Timbaland and Swiss Beats do where they How can that makes me laugh every artists. time you say they they put two different artists, they pit two different artists against each other, but that's not what we do. In our verses, versus, and we spell it to, totally different, versus like sis, because these are my sisters. Um we take the same artist and take their songs and pit their songs against each other. It makes it even harder because you love the artist and yes. now you got to figure out which two of the songs that you love the most from that one person. <laughs> yes. It's so sweaty and everything. I hate it. But I am Let's ready. Go. And Jamie gave us um, a couple people that she liked and we decided to go with 
Taylor Swift. Um, Taylor Swift has a whole catalog of music. Are it, you I, a Swifty? I am a Swifty. <laughs> I am like, I love her. I went to one of her shows. It was the most amazing thing ever. Wow. Like her shows are so good. I went to her show at um, MetLife Stadium. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a rain show. It poured the whole time, but it, wow. the show was so fun that like, like it you don't, matter. didn't even care it's that you're in like the rain. Disney World. There I you go. Know. You I don't just, care. Feel like the I only place I, in like we go have a today. <laughs> so in preparing for this versus, I realized that a I know a lot of Taylor Swift songs, which now I feel I am a Swiftie. Yeah. And two, I told, I told myself. I not this is a true story. You're and definitely I not said it early. I feel like I am now. Listen to me. I told you <laughs> once this pandemic is over, yeah. I'm gonna tell Liani, my niece, she loves music. I'm gonna tell Liani, let's go see Taylor Swift. I have to go. It's so amazing. Her shows are because so I was watching the videos of her live concerts and I was like, I think I'm we need to go. Time. Yeah, I it's think so I'm fun. Like, I'm at a Taylor Swift show, so that's my plan. True it story. So, yeah, it's so fun. When um at the show that I went to, they give you wristbands, and when she performs, like in the whole stadium, it goes. It's different colors depending on where you're sitting, and it goes with the beat of the music. What? Like, Ooh. Ooh. I want to go stadium. just for the trinkets. I want to go. Yeah. That sounds like the light show I took my kids to see during Christmas. But Technology. That is definitely a side I bar. love everything with gonna... the lights. All of the you lights. You the one at the PNC? Is that what you're talking about? This was at somebody's house. <laughs> oh. oh. In Scotch what? Plains. We drove. It was posted all over the place. We drove to go see. It was a 30-minute show. Okay. Mm -hmm. but... What? Look, it, that's man. another story. Put a pin in that <laughs> on. Put a pin in that because that sounds amazing. Because we need right. what at somebody's house? <laughs> pin that. Pin <laughs> it. Steve <laughs> Jobs' house? No. Face <laughs> Whose house was it? It's pin amazing. that. I am ready. So if Bill you're ready, ready, I'm ready. I hope ready. you guys are ready. Yes. So the ready. I have a couple. I I'm just ready. do it. Just ready do as it. I'm ever going to be. So here we go. <laughs> the first one, one of my karaoke favorites is You Belong With Me. You Belong versus, With Me. Versus Love Story. You Belong With Me. You belong love with Story. Me. I'm going to, for reference. First. Oh. I am gonna <laughs> company. I'm going to pick right, You Belong Jamie, With Me. I'm, we're sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm with Jamie. Yeah, me as well. Can't you see? I already just I had already decided for me as you belong with me because that's the one I like. So, were you unanimous? Yeah. Are we yeah. unanimous? Yes. yes. Never. I mean, I will that say wasn't this. easy. That was, that was easy. easy but I will say this: Love Story gave me, and I just want to bring this up because yeah, I'm yeah, I'm almost trying to bring this up. Love Story video gives me Bridgerton vibes. I, love I just want to talk about Bridget. You just want to talk about Bridget. I'm, I'm, it I'm re watching it now. Re <laughs> There's only six episodes, right? Uh, I think it's for eight. Eight? eight. eight. Okay. I loved it. All of it. All Maybe of someday. It. When oh, so one day. To watch. You belong with me. When I've watched everything that there is to finish watching on Earth, then maybe. Then you'll get to Bridgerton. Then I'll get to Maybe. It. need to do <laughs> Bridgerton first. I have a very long list of things. Well, I have, have a lifelong list of put things it, that I have Put Bridgerton at the it. top of that list. Just saying. I'll watch it. <laughs> You've been I saying that for a year. I have been. I've been saying that. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll get you it. I, I, told, was, I went through the phase. I was like, I'm only answering um, email. Um, text messages and chats with Bridgerton memes and I kept sending them <laughs> memes and just, just. we didn't know Although what it you was. Know the we didn't know what it was. Coming back. I know. I, I, I it hurts my heart. <laughs> Therese broke the news to me that he was not going to be returning. I get I was, it. I was excited to break that news to you for some reason. I don't know. Isn't she terrible? Isn't she terrible? Because that's all, all of me said it. I'm all of me all of his back. Back. all his. Why did I have a vision I of uh, Dave Chappelle as uh, <laughs> as Rick James putting his feet on <laughs> on the white couch? <laughs> that was me sending the uh, sending the uh, attack. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I'm okay. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. This. Sorry. But we're I all like unanimous. This. We all decided you belong yes. with me. Yes, yes ma'am. All right. Yes, it is like one. this. We got more. On the one more. more. Okay, okay. okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, okay, let's go fast. Um so <laughs> shake it off. Shake it off. Versus I knew you were trouble. Oh 
I'm not supposed to go first. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. in. I knew you were trouble. That's my pick. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I knew you were trouble with mine too. I'm gonna go yeah, with me too. Uh, I'm with you. Yes. 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 I knew you were trouble. <laughs> that's my damn. Oh. I used to sing that to my kids. Oh. Yes. 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 No, and I don't think I'm gonna because the next Why? two are, They're pop- when, <laughs> the next two picks are featuring Ed Sheeran. Mm. Okay. So But well, why would uh, you do that though? Why would you not do that? <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get back to the songs. We'll get back to it. Can I get the song? Why so the first one is Endgame. And the other one is Everything Has Changed. <laughs> Look at Sharice's face. <laughs> They're two different, like one is more like poppy, the other one is more yeah. like a love song, but they're both featuring Ed Cheering. I mean, the end game has future in it, but. What did you just call that man? Ed Cheering. Cheering. Ed Cheering. You put a G on it. I did. I put an S <laughs> on things. I put a G on things. It's fine. Okay. I've also seen Ed Sheeran and he was really good live. I'm sure he I'm is. Sure he's good live. I'm um, sure he is. Yeah. I, okay. like end game. Game. What was the other one? End game. End game. Yeah. What was the first one? I'm um, just so disappointed because there are some everything has changed. Major, major hits by Taylor Swift that you just will not that you're not touching on right now. <laughs> it would be like we're gonna, I don't even want to. I don't even want to bring up the comparison. You pick your song for it. I'm gonna. But pick it would be like change. I love that song. I'm yeah. end game. It's a good song. I'm end going game with is whatever bad. our guest says at this point. Sharice <laughs> is like, mm. Therese, please yeah. tell Jamie the song that you were going to pick, regardless of what two songs are. <laughs> Let's share that. Jamie, no, please, you but, tell her. You no, tell her. I would refuse because I wasn't going to let you play that game. Because someone please tell Jamie the song that Sharice. Why isn't it? Why isn't that song in any of your um, battles? <laughs> your verses? Like, why are you removing that song? Sharice, what's the song? Oh, I don't, I don't, what, what's the name of it? What did we say the name of it was? <laughs> Go ahead, tell me the name of it, because I, I, it escapes me right now. No, it escapes me Because right I'll right. sing it, I'll it's sing it. It is on your list, I guarantee you it's, it's on, on your the list. list. Is it, look what you made me do? Yeah. Or is it <laughs> How Jamie, could she, right? to say it. Jamie, it's, it's, I do have it. Actually, if we got a few, if you got a, little, a smidge of time, I did have, look what you made me do. This is versus malpractice. <laughs> bad blood. Put bad blood against look this what This is versus do. malpractice. Go ahead. I just it's gave a, you Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do versus <laughs> bad blood. Look what makes Am I picking first? Yes, Jamie, <laughs> you're picking first, even though Sharice has already decided. <laughs> I'm okay, so I'm gonna pick bad blood. Now we got bad blood. Oh, yeah. Now we got bad blood. I would blood. pick bad blood in that one. I would not pick look what you made me. Look do, what you made me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm gonna pick bad blood. You can well, Sharice, you could sing that song with if bad you blood didn't pick your songs. You could <laughs> like look what you made me look, do. Sharice is the only one who picked look what you made me do. <laughs> and I told you, <laughs> but I also thing. told you in advance what I was picking. Yes, she said, she said that was going to be her pick regardless of It didn't song. matter what you put it against. It didn't matter what we mentioned, that was going to be her pick. I'm um, just, and I was trying not to put it in there, but I was like, we got a little bit of time. It didn't matter. Time. The I bad actually, blood music video is so good. I love it. Because it, it has all the girls in it. Oh, is that the one with all the, yes. everybody? Yeah. Yeah, everybody. All the bad bitches. <laughs> Because that, that's what it was, right? So, it was, it was like, good, I like that video. It was a fun yeah. video. Yeah. Cute. Well, this was fun, ladies. It was, it was. Jamie, we enjoyed you. This was such Thanks good. For inviting me. I'm Thank starting you. my blog in 62 days. Hopefully, oh. hopefully, it wasn't too rough of an experience, was it? No, it was we fun. Need to it? Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. We, you know, we put people through it. <laughs> We well, I put people through it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're going to put all of uh, Jamie's information in the comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's at Life According to Jamie on Instagram. And then the blog is just 
Life According to Jamie. Um, yep. yep and uh we we've been following and and as we all said the the photos are amazing and right. if you want to see uh a little cutie figuring out how to roller skate <laughs> the second time in her life uh go check her out <laughs> it's right, adorable ladies, before we it is adorable before we wrap up danny you have something for the people i do i just want to thank everybody again for tuning in and watching um, we have new episodes, like we always tell you, dropping every Wednesday. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Anchor. Okay, so you can listen to us or watch us on wherever you would like to. All right. And remember to do four things for us, please. Like, follow, subscribe, and share. All right. And we will see you guys again next week. Boom. Jamie, how do we do merch? <laughs> How do we do merch? Oh, you know how done merch? Neither have we. Merch is coming soon. Thank you for reminding me. Merch is coming soon. Yes, it is. Soon. <laughs>